Welcome everyone to another nightly live stream here in our low level, hopefully soon 3D driver series. And uh, this in my hands that I'm holding is slightly off because it uh, has a cable. Don't really want to disconnect it because I have a SSA secure shell session there. So this from my previous videos is uh, uh, previous world's smallest PC Guinness world record kind of stuff, OCO01. Um, mostly I got this actually with all my more collectible things uh, already a decade ago, long before the YouTube stuff. And actually mostly for the transmitter efficient. So this is mostly not only the at the time kind of maybe even still sort of world's smallest PC, uh, already from 2005 I have a dedicated video and on top of this rocking a transmitter Crusoe 1 GHz it's a plus version so this has 512 megabyte ROM the non plus version has only 256 similar to the P3 and also USB 2 and the non plus version had only USB 1 so so much to that um, it's also running a silicon motion link 3D one of the esoteric and not as known 3D chips, which I happen to have the specifications there open already. Today I finally started with this low level code, also a little bit different. Today we are not doing this on DOS, the other low level stuff for the S3 Verge. Are we still online and battery good? That is a OCO transmitter fishing here, not making this stuff up. CPU info here, so live on Utrip Transmitter Crusoe TM5800. And um, yeah, this uh, you might ask why am I even doing this here after one unsuccessful one man Linux distribution, also unsuccessful one man 3D code. But not only for my fun, I said it already after reverse engineering 20 years of scanner drivers, uh, doing a little bit different here. Also, it just is bugging me that the Xorg and Mesa developers are more often deleting support these days also for Matrox and stuff. But also this, and you will see it back in a second, again this nice cruiser. So this chip here had for many years, I think it was even on the FTP server, the specification. And so everyone in the last decade could have, or 15 years, could have written a driver and there were plenty of people working on this. Let me, this is a kernel source of SM earlier. My Firefox crashed, so this is even copyright 2006, so only a little bit over a decade old. By the way, somehow it's a little bit brightish today. Did I even? Anyway, it does not matter too much. Is this even whatever? Um, yes, yeah, so even you see frame buffer driver, the same frame buffer driver, and also the in the Linux kernel as well as the Exoc driver, not the most amazing um, for many reasons. Um, but even the most, not the most amazing reason here, copyright silicon motion, not really sure how much they wrote from this also. The X driver is here. And um, if you take a look, of course nowadays uh, it's not as usable anymore because X or people deleted X, uh, XRR, X, uh, X acceleration or accelerated architecture. And uh, even this is 2000 silicon motion, so maybe they have written quite some code there initially and back in the day it could accelerate some stuff um, but even this code it's too many magic constants for example this I've even done better in my unsuccessful one-man code here in just one day of course I copied here nothing I wrote this here from, scra from scratch here would be one of those blocks issuing commands to this memory map all oh, for the details of my previous videos S3 Verge Voodoo so this is again similar and um, here's some macro because why not macro and here are the registers and uh, yeah so this are magic values just as in other drivers which was the last one maybe Verge or Voodoo or our rendition variety oh, I've made so many videos um, again not the most fan of magic numbers here so this is not cool because this way you don't really need know what it is and so this is like uh, as you see thumb width and data format and this is by the way so this is uh, some 
planar mask and some some bit and some byte mask and yeah you see how amazing it is if you don't have symbolic constants so yeah but let's get back to my code so the I have this, uh, so uh, by the way, it disappeared from the internet. It's not on their reachable on the server anymore, but I saved a copy already 10 years ago. And now after running my company for 10 years, I do a little bit of this side hobby fun here and want to get 3D going. Because as I said, even this device shipped with Windows XP, this Oco company, I think, founded half from some former Apple people, and it shipped with Windows XP tablet edition and even on Windows, as I mentioned earlier, it never had a 3D driver. The only 3D driver from Silicon Motion that, as far as I know, ever existed was for the Windows 95 and such not as protected mode series. So yeah, the people who were rocking this small little guy that you will see back in a second um, never could experience 3D. And of course, now we are here to fix this live on YouTube. Thanks everyone for tuning in. And so this specification, why do I also do this additionally except having fun because I think this is more fun than playing, playing Mario, Mario Kart or Zodoku or Tetris. Um, puzzling here, Tetris like your register magic values in, in your memory mapped IO registers. And um, plenty of fun in my opinion. And also I want really to criticize Nvidia for not releasing the specification, even unsuccessful a couple of people companies like Silicon Motion could do it. By the way, fun fact, I think they are still around nowadays. They make SSD controllers and stuff. And um, <clears throat> yeah, nice uh, documentation here. You, you see, this is how it should like, unless you have some crappy card like from Nvidia where you don't get this. And in my opinion, this is similar. By the way, I would not even ask for this here. This is, by the way, fun to, uh, IOL uh, to be done here, <laughs> maximum. Um, maximum amps or something to be done, but whatever. Um, fun fact, I would not even need this electrical specification here, not really that much interested in that, but uh, fun fact that it's here. Um, I wish, however, so in my opinion, they it would be okay that they make two specifications, one like uh, electrical, mechanical, that I'm not even interested in, because here you will even see some BGA pin uh, breakout here that most people never need unless you manufacture the hardware yourself on a uh, OEM PCB there like this OCO. So this they could even keep in my opinion but of course the more open the better. And uh, yeah 2D is quite documented here uh, in the spec again similar to the S3 Verge and Voodoo if you're into this kind of stuff and yeah pins and 2D stuff here somewhere vi even video processor and stuff is documented here. Um, cool stuff. I wish it's of course ironic that those companies who release spec are not around anymore except um, ATI AMD. By the way, I hope the audio is okay. Um, yeah, so the only thing that is a little bit underdocumented is 3D and I've not yet implemented 3D today. I only did the basic enablement here. This is a similar um, 3D like S3 Verge or Voodoo kind of, um, probably my opinion. Also, of course, more flexible than the Voodoo. It can do, uh, it has a built-in RAM deck, even f with dual head for VGA and flat panel. And um, 2D functions, obviously, everything the first Voodoo's all didn't had. And uh, so 3D is a little bit underdocumented, so I'm not really sure if I will get 3D to work. Uh, this is something for next weekend or next week or something of that sort. Because you see here, uh, where would it be, 3D? So the 2D registers are pretty well documented. And today I got 2D working. I will show it to you in a second. And also what I did around this. Extended SMI. By the way, freaking hot in Berlin. The 3D registers, at least they are documented, but they are not the most documented. So you, it will probably be hard to get it working. It might be the reason why nobody has done it so far ever and where would this be anyway we are way too up there at least somewhere there so 3d wherever that starts you see it's of course hilarious right the most of the documentation is 2d and 3d is only then very briefly layer like here so 3d is documented that is already better than an, at nvidia but only very briefly so they mm -hmm. give here no additionally clue or example you basically um, at least the bits are documented but even those the most brief possible. I mean, yeah, the bits are documented, but um, 
again, this uh, just with this bit is doing that, it doesn't mean it will just work. So um, there are certainly many corner cases and, and bits. Even today, one bit I will show you in a second took uh, extremely long. Let me just, um, oh, this is good, let me bring the camera around. Um, and then we go through the code. And unlike the previous example where I used DOS to run this low level, this time, because certainly this DOS stuff becomes um, boring, maybe for some of you, nobody interested in DOS, I guess. And um, this is why this time I've done this directly on Linux. And uh, with a little bit special setup, because normally you, of course, have the frame buffer running as well as um, the kernel driver and Xorg and stuff. So here's the setup. This is uh, the stupid frame buffer driver is not amazing. It is uh, disabling the display. If I would start X, I could have vid video output on Z. And let's show you the test pattern of this because this is of course right now running. So some nice I could also have been so smart to move uh, one of those over. So we really have some nice stuff running here. Let me just I need my OBS window obviously. And uh, this is also the video amazing stuff. And uh, yeah this took quite some hours especially getting to run this on Linux. So this is a little bit like you would do well, not only like the Xorg server has done, but also um, so the classic Xorg server, or even today the classic drivers that still are some around, but we have here a frame buffer console. So I run this here um, like cooperatively, like um, without X certainly, well, so theoretically it would even work with X running, but I just memory map everything myself and do this from user space just like the X servers, uh, X servers did back in the day. And um, yeah, so just like the DOS examples, I filled some test pattern and already bit BLT something. And this again, of course, took quite some hours to get all the infrastructure working. Well, I'm interested in DOS, guess I belong to the minority. Yeah, so the good thing is that it's good that you're interested in DOS. Um, Stay tuned for that. Let me just switch around. So basically, what but what is the cool thing is that this would work similar uh, in DOS because what I've done here is so where is even my OBS? Too many windows here. OBS. Um, the reason, the major reason I've not done this in DOS, by the way, I normally kind of would have liked to do it in DOS just for the hundred percent low level stuff, but. Unfortunately, the OCO does not network boot. Um, if you want to do me a favor, I found somewhere an announcement that there is a BIOS update. So I run BIOS 0, uh, 1, 0, 22 or something. There was, I found there is an announcement for BIOS 1, 0, 44 or something like that. I couldn't find it yet. Uh, maybe it's somewhere in archive.org or something. Um, some people said it fixed some boot options and such because so network booting doesn't work. So, BIOS has an option for network boot, but it doesn't work. For me, it immediately says PXE error, I don't know, 62 or something. And I TCP, I even TCP dumped this, and it's not a single packet is coming out of this USB because this is USB attached here um, as is, uh, in, in this dongle cable that you can see in my full review. And mostly due to this, because I can't easily network boot this, and then with a USB stick and DOS, it's of course not the most amazing if you for each code change need to plug in some USB uh, drive back and forth. And um, so what I've done here, advancing our, yes, right now it is of course quite uh, crappy, not as amazing as uh, more successful Linux kernel stuff also, but we are getting there because long term, not only will do I want to have 3D code for all the nice vintage chips that the Mesa people have up and done. So S3 Verge Voodoo and now Lynx and then Mesa ATI NVIDIA and P3 RSX obviously, which I also have worked on. So this is the same open source DOS kernel stuff that has a 3D S3 Verge. And um, now I started um, Voodoo and uh, this Lynx. And uh, so this is running on the, as you see, on the OCO here. And also, so this is Z here, right? Transmitter code morphing here, our code. 
And uh, so similar to the other files and gradually as this YouTube channel grows and all our low level tinkering is growing, I will further clean this up. So similar to S3 Verge and Voodoo, I started here some Silicon Motion Link 3D, low level register bits here and here's the memory layout. Uh, what is a little bit esoteric is that first comes the um, control registers and later the frame buffer here. Usually it is the other way around, but whatever. So this is exactly similar. Again, work in proof of concept, work in progress code. We will this makes this more amazing. But one thing that is already more amazing are here our, actually I changed this uh, earlier. Why is here new? I changed this. So obviously I copied this from the Verge example. Uh, earlier I once lost here some changes, so maybe that is I lost the changes. What I criticized earlier here with the uh, XOC driver is this here, this magic values and in my code similar to the S3 Virgin Voodoo. Well, it is not yet amazing, but hopefully eventually it will be. So this is what I mean with a nice enum of list of registers, so source, Y, X and so on. Similar named to the standard, I just named them slightly differently for, well, abbreviated and such, not foreground color and just FG and BG, not to type forever also. Well, theoretically in others, I would normally name this clip, but they call it scissor in the spec, so maybe scissor for now doesn't really matter. Also, you see this, um, this graphic chips, this GPUs are also similar, so Verge Voodoo, um, we will probably really getting in a couple of months to some point where we have some mini GL kind of, well, my own from scratch, low level like mini GL or something for Verge, Voodoo and Links and others. And it's really, in my opinion, yeah, this, maybe this is also because the code was a little bit, well, two decades ago, a little bit old fashionedly written that it's so unmaintainable that everything is lost. Um, they're like uh, Voodoo and Verge code deleted in Mesa. And um, because this is also similar, in my opinion, this is ridiculous that I probably could write a fully featured driver in probably a month, I would guess. Uh, I, well, I, I hope I have triangles maybe in another rainy uh, afternoon or something. Um, by the way, this flickering display here is some display port fail on the Mac Mini because why should it not fail? Um, Let's see, uh, we have some comments. An uh, EPIC project would be, could reverse engineer transmitter internal microport. Yeah, some people have done this, um, at least a little bit. You, if you Google this, there is some reverse engineering of uh, this crew, so but not so efficient. I have, of course, both. As you have seen on my YouTube channel, I do not collect this stuff for YouTube. I have this already over a decade and the other, I've, I have one crew, uh, crew, so and one transmitter efficient. And, um, yeah, I would, uh, I said this already, if someone has the source code, so I will probably not really reverse engineer the whole transmitter code morphing software. That would, however, be amazing. I also heard one, once upon a time they partnered with AMD, so maybe there exists some AMD 64 mode, maybe for the efficient or something. Um, if someone from transmitter could leak the whole source to me, that would be amazing to rebuild new releases, but not really guessing that will happen. I'm already busy enough with getting the PS3 RSX, I did a little bit more work with the GPU exception and link doesn't really work yet, but whatever. Um, yeah, ARM or, um, or ARM or adding 64-bit uh, support would be cool. Um, so you see this code, so normally all of this code, when you run here, makes this, this is building all the stuff for DOS, obviously. So um, for this, I did here quite some clutch, um, which is not this file, but this file. And so what I've done normally, the my GCC stuff from the previous examples, if you want to do vintage, retro, low level GPU and other stuff to run on DOS. And what I've done here is I've set up similar code, the main function, so this is just one test sim sample. I will most probably create some infrastructure that you can build this for DOS for Linux or our microkernel <coughs> to come. Because why do I also do this? Because I want to have some real working hardware where I can really have a 3D driver, at least a simple one for some testing for some microkernel multi-server 
3D driver drafting. And yes, we will get to NVIDIA, Reva, Modrox stuff. So similar to the DOS code, this is of course now normal program, uh, normal Unix program that I built with uh, G++ here and really run it. The only thing is right now I need to specify the physical memory address from the GPU and the amount of memory I want to map from this uh, normally. On the DOS side I have already code for this, like low-level PCI code. And right now I have hard-coded this from the LS PCI V here. So this is the VGI, VGA device, the Silicon Motion SM720 Link 3DM. And here is, it has one memory bar here, F000, zero many zeros, and 64 megabyte in size, although uh, it only has eight megabyte VRAM, which is certainly already quite a lot more than my, uh, similar to my Voodoo, actually. So coming back to this example that you also learn something, so you can even Linux map physical memory from user space if you do not disable this, of course, only as root. The X server is, for example, doing this. So all the classic user space, user mode, classic device dependent X server drivers do this here. We open dev mem and um, if we can open this, certainly we should be able to open this. Then we memory map this here. This the first pointer is just some you, you can supply a pointer there, then the Linux kernel tries, but this is only the virtual, so the Linux kernel would probably try to map this to a similar virtual address, but it totally doesn't matter for most use cases anyway. So we want to read, write, we want to map shared. You can also map private, but then you don't. I Actually, I spent a couple of minutes because I first had to map private. Um, that didn't work. I think map private probably did a copy on write copy of the pages, which is not what we want or something of that sort, um, only with map shared, because I could read the frame buffer but not write into it, and that only worked with map shared. I, I guess the other did copy on write or something. The file descriptor, and this is a physical, physical address, that is our F0000, the physical address um, of the hardware there on the, on the hardware level of the wires and logic gates and such. So when we memory map this, then we have this. This is of course not the physical address; it is some logical virtual address of the user space process. Then, um, but that totally doesn't matter. And to share the code identical with the DOS example stuff, I implemented here the same. Um, I have said this Unreal pointer, and probably I will because on the DOS side we run in real mode with 16-bit segments and all this uh, Intel crap there from vintage retro back in the day. And on DOS, I switch to protected mode and create some Unreal pointer. And to be able to share all the code, because this is not yet amazing, I need to probably come up with some better idea, but today I only wanted to get this working. Um, and for this, I use the same Unreal pointer just for the Linux without the protected mode stuff, but just accessing those memory map directly. And with this, it would be possible not only to reuse all of our Voodoo, but also S3 Verge stuff directly running in Linux and of course for the future with our microkernel. Of course this clutch here with some I.O. memory map accessor is not amazing. Um, again this is only for the DOS example but um, whatever. And um, yeah for this the rest is then basically here the same kind of setup. Um, I made it. I made it just some. I pretty printed here some registers. So this is just some debug stuff here that you can do. By the way, this is also a shout out in my opinion. So much more amazing to develop um, if you just run this here with G++ and run this here. Imagine my multi-server microkernel. So much more amazing. You can just edit, compile, and run your low-level code stuff just as I did here. I always find this a little bit tedious in the Linux kernel, monolithic Linux kernel. Of course, with modules still RM mod, ins mod, but it can still break through the kernel, right? This this is already a little bit safer. We, with this, we can only break our memory mapped. Well, and we could DMA stuff, but that aside, I think it's like, although you can break something with this, it's still less error prone and more um, more con convenient and comfortable to develop. You can also just run a normal GDB and what you cannot as easily do. And 
have here all the printouts and reading data files and dumping and logging and uh, all the other amazing stuff. Um, yet to run this, um, of course right now I've run this already. I can go a little bit more through the code. So of course this is not yet 3D. Why have I done 2D first? Um, let's scroll a little bit. You see this is a regular um, Linux kernel frame buffer here. And um, then if we run this without compiling, this runs this directly. We fill this just as, uh, by the way, did I even switch to the right? Oh, not even sure. Anyway, um, we fill this with a test pattern similar to our DOS example. Blit here, and again, this is 100% the same code that is open source in my DOS kernel framework drafting code there and uh, using the same font blitting and stuff. And this is already hardware accelerated. Of course, this uh, fun fact, the Linux, um, the Linux frame buffer driver does not support this, right? So, so much to how amazing is this open source code? You see one unsuccessful one-man distribution guy here is doing this as a hobby in one afternoon. What all the other amazing Red Hat SUSE, Ubuntu Debian, and even the people from Silicon Motion, and yeah, this display port gets on my nerves. I um, need to check what is causing this. Anyway, the frame buffer code does not have support for this, right? So theoretically, it could accelerate fill rectangle and it could accelerate bit BLT in the old fashioned frame buffer drivers in Linux, but they don't do this here. So this is the generic CFB uh, color frame buffer, also fill rectangle stuff here, generic code. So not even this, ha they have implemented. Although I think, again, quite some people worked on this here, um, apparently at least. Also, Lee mode, this could mean uh, probably it was used in this chip, this silicon motion chip, of course, used in plenty of devices, including ThinkPads. Uh, this Lee mode is m probably, I guess, the MIPS netbook, as far as I remember, I guess. And um, yeah, so much to. How amazing are open source drivers if nobody really pays for this or I don't know what. Um, so basically, so the fill, so with this, the Linux frame buffer driver doesn't even support this. The X driver did support this with XR, um, with XRR. Of course, XRR is, ah, bloody display port, can't make this up. XRR is of course going away. Um, there is some basic XR. Um, not really sure did this do fill. Maybe it's not us, oh, it's called maybe solid. Maybe the XR is doing solid, but anyway, my point is not to re implement the X server driver. By the way, I could, uh, yes, this is annoying, but I'm happy that you don't need to work with this. Yeah, but also Mac Mini, right? Amazing Apple quality. So, yeah, again, um, here's this magic numbers and um, this display something is also failing. Uh, magic numbers not not amazing, and um, with this being said, I can show you the rest of the program. So, if you're interested in this, of course, I after some cleaning up, I will commit this um, right now. So, if you have seen the other DOS demos, this is exactly similar code, and a lot of stuff we share here already. So. We share here, we include here the VGA header, the Lynx 3D header, the VGA header, of course, also doing the uh, text uh, font splitting there. And then for the rest, of course, here's the rest right now, it is a copy of the S3 Verge driver. And um, a lot of the stuff needs to, still needs to be implemented and all the S3 Verge stuff deleted. But next is, of course, doing the triangle then. So I've done this. 2D stuff because it is of course always easier. Um, I already also even in this register enum already commented here quite some other registers that we need here for the next 3D triangle stuff. Uh, probably this will take a whole day to get um, to type in all those assignments here. So the fill looks like this. Um, and yes, uh, if you're wondering, this looks exactly like creating a new acceleration architecture here. Um, for all this kind of, uh, it's a little bit annoying here, and yeah, old hardware um, or cables. 
The only thing, so my opinion, this is slightly more readable. This is more amazing enums here. And um, yes, here are still some magic constants. Um, I will need to define nice enums for the two, for the formats. Um, this is, for example, the destination format 16-bit. Uh, fun fact, so what took so long? So uh, the longest took actually getting this infrastructure here running in Linux from user space, getting all this memory map stuff, doing uh, exactly what it's supposed to do. Once you have it like this, of course, then it's edit compile super easy. And the second longest uh, thing actually was here, I mistyped this. Um, I can show you what this does. This is also a testament how amazing C is, right? Um, of course, this is valid. Um, binary 0, 1, less than 4. This will elu evaluate uh, to true. So this will most likely, uh, I guess, result in a 1. And this will compile, right? Compile and run without even a warning. Well, like a warning except there, but doesn't really matter. And this produces wrong output and this took me quite quite a while because you see now the bit blt is at the wrong place and um, distorted there and this is because this was the destination format the image format just that you have seen things like this already so this kind of stuff usually takes the longest uh, during driver development uh, is this even the right file maybe not um, and this took quite some, this is why I have here quite some register debugging until I realized, wait a second, this is not the right value um, because if this, 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 this is 4 bits shifted to the left, so with this bits um, 0, this is 8 bits and then the, the 1 is not at the right place because then the 1 is the first bit there and uh, that is not where we need it and uh, this is why this is um, width and height divided by 2 because it's 8 instead of 16 bit. Um, such kind of bugs often take the longest to find in my opinion. But if you have other opinions, leave me know, let me know. Uh, here this Fs are probably will, we will not make constants for this because these are bit masks and byte masks for the bits and bytes of the I think 64 bit bus of the GPU to write. So this is just uh, bit masks. If you mask bits out, then not all the pixels are written there. Um, but yeah, of, for, of this formats, we will make nice symbolic constants another day. The infrastructure is exactly the same as I used for the Verge and Voodoo. So as much more as we advance here, we will have a collection of nice low level code. I hope more readable. The only clutch of course is here a little bit this pro Unreal Protected Mode pointer that, of course, as I outlined earlier, in the Linux build here, I redefined so that it's not an Unreal pointer, but directly linear writing here to the virtual memory map range there. But you see this is portable code. Maybe it, of course, again, we only need this due to the DOS example. If we would want to give up this DOS, uh, support we could completely do away with it but maybe it's not the worst thing to do in a low level driver framework maybe um, we just use something like MMIO uh, load and store or something uh, just rename these functions like load 8 uh, 16 32 and store 8 also with our typo obviously 1632 and uh, with this, we could still carry on DOS support, of course, again, totally vintage outdated system. Maybe it's not really worth it. It's also a little bit sad. We could make this more readable if C++ would support um, us at least old fashioned 1998 C++ does not support us. I think C++ still would not support a syntax um, at least with this. And by the way, I, I use here already, this is already lightweight C++. Um, it would of course be amazing if we could make it like this um, that it's normal array access uh, like IO base plus a register draw whatever but for storing values that uh, wait a second for for reading values that works that is not a problem you can totally um, because you can overload this operator operator 
um, array, array access here, but um, this does not work for assignments as easily. Um, this would, I think you could probably make it work in C++, but only very ugly, in my opinion, by returning uh, some accessor object, like, because, again, if you would overload this here uh, to something, return, so returning is easy, like for, for load, having here load, like something is totally no problem, like return, return this Unreal point or something, like ex access of array, whatever. That is, of, that is of course the uh, intended use case here, but the problem is that this returns um, some, for example, uint8 or something, and you cannot write it like this, you cannot store it like this. It's probably possible to return, again, but oh, oh, this is why I'm not even the greatest fan of C++ anymore. Like, it's it's so huge, yet so simple things you cannot do easily. You can probably return some accessor object, like some very special, like, access uh, object something that has some assignment operator and um, then store it to this memory address. But this is, in my opinion, a little, as the problem is for DOS, you would need the compiler to really optimize all this um, additional syntactic sugar away, which probably even the latest GCC will not do. And then it's huge unreadable code. The problem is also on the DOS build, we only have 64K uh, real mode segments with this kind of special setup. So um, standard vector bool specialization does a trick like that. Okay, interesting. Um, all right, uh, int yeah, okay. Um, I can take a look, but the problem is we need to make sure that the code, if we want to support DOS, right, we, we talk so long, or I talk so long for this very special 64K remote segment hack stuff that I've done for that. And um, yeah, uh, now I need to think what I need to delete here, maybe that. And yeah, so much for that um, unsuccessful one-man Linux distribution creates a new acceleration stuff in one afternoon. Um, of course, again, not yet 3D, but what is needed for 3D? Well, for 3D, you would think it's not so much. This is why I find it really um, historically sad and irritating that nobody has done this ever here for this Link 3D. And I find it also sad that Mesa deletes so many drivers, this old vintage drivers. Because so this, this are all the, and yeah, they even call it your quick reference, I think. Um, where is even global fog? Yeah, so it's like quick reference. So yeah, PC bus master, second table of entries, this is DMA, table of entry, physical address, um, starting address, table of entry, transfer size remaining, yeah. So 3D register. So this is the rule you see at page 286 of 349. There you see 3D registers only got here very little space. And it doesn't look so difficult depending on how lucky you are with what bits you mistype. It's, I think it should be possible to get a texture, uh, to get a garage shaded triangle in one day, I think maybe even Texture triangle in one off, in one um, in one weekend, maybe. Um, but again, sometimes I'm not so lucky. The, the voodoo was a real hool bitch. Um, not, you, the, on the voodoo, I've not yet textured triangles. It should should be not far away. But I don't need this voodoo now each and every day. So I rather continue with something more interesting and only finish the voodoo texturing when I really need it. For example, if I develop a real fancy 3D demo, demo or vintage game. Uh, until that, this uh, transmitter uh, efficient, uh, transmitter, transmitter cruiser here certainly um, more interesting than the Voodoo, at least for me, your mileage may vary. Even has Firewire, by the way, fun fact, Firewire, USB. Um, so nearly more ports than a modern MacBook Air, something of that sort, so actually not too bad. Um, and yeah, here's by the way the keyboard, but again, long video there. The display also works if it's not the stupid frame buffer that turns it off. Um, so yeah, but whatever. Another day we will have a whole driver with mode setting, but that is for another winter day. Next I do 
triangles and uh, even that again pretty similar to the verge or kind of voodoo I would say um, and uh, that will be interesting to see uh, what we're getting and um, yeah stacking it up again I probably I said this again not only calling out here Nvidia not releasing this amazing documentation but also um, you see this is not too much magic right each and every one of you could do this if you have a thinkpad that has this chip just makes this driver um, just that this again nvidia has no documentation that is really sad this is why maybe all of you who want better nvidia drivers because working on the rsx of course not the most amazing without specification maybe write nvidia and support open source developers annoying them for specifications uh, also, right, we purchase this, right? If this is a car and you want to repair it, it is just a fact that you cannot, you can disassemble a car engine, but you can't disassemble the integrated circuits here. So this is why, in my opinion, it is um, quite normal to expect specifications and to be able, if you purchase a device, no matter if it's a nice portable device or a P3, that you get specifications to really make use of it. And again, even the manufacturer, this is of course the most hilarious, right? That even the vendor never made a Windows XP 3D driver, as far as I know at least, um, which is, yeah, even probably shouldn't have been too much of a deal, but there you see amazing support. Yeah, but of course, again, it's, it's more exceptional hardware, of course. NVIDIA creates Windows drivers, but yeah, even even if you have some multi-head Martrock stuff or some other, even here like this, um, even for all the special devices, right, like this Epifan, also binary only on Linux, Linux, no specification, also even there, not even for the latest macOS version, right, if there would be specification, in my opinion, should have kind of be required of vendors to publish specifications. And yeah, also, if you want that, I sh uh, reverse engineer this amazing uh, binary only capture dongle thing then best share like and subscribe and also if you want to see as this uh, silicon motion links to do 3d eventually um, would be amazing if you share like and subscribe for all this amazing stuff and um, yeah very theoretically we could of course the more because i find this although it's linux what is it birthday 28th birthday of linux kernel this code is really old-fashioned and I mean yes there is better code like the block layer looks better or something but often drivers yeah well well at least it's half but yeah I don't know somehow but it's not even bit building right so even scrolling on the frame buffer you see even I have done a bit built in one uh, evening right so even uh, by the way fun fact I for forgot this, so um, I wanted to mention, as you see, the frame buffer is only redrawing actually where there is content. Um, and um, as you see, when we overwrite this, it is only, only redrawing the moving text there, so um, not, not even using BitBLT for that kind of scrolling though, but yeah. It could have been there, it isn't there. And uh, the also recurring shout out that I don't find, of course, uh, other people on Foronix uh, are waiting for frame buffers to be deleted. There's this recurring yearly article, when will frame buffer drivers be deleted? But a lot of functionality will go away, right? Not even for, if like people want their frame buffers are deleted, then you don't have a frame buffer for the P3, for the SGI Octane and hundreds of others vintage or not as lighted hardware even silicon motion links and um, other all this other kind of even the Curo, the power vr and like basically hundreds or two hundreds maybe even yeah with all the embedded stuff really many frame buffer drivers i don't quite understand the need in my opinion this frame buffer stuff not too bad my critic in this however is I said this before, I'm not the greatest fan of the separation of frame buffer, direct rendering manager, mode setting, libdrm, um, classic vintage 
X drivers and Mesars, so really many driver parts. And as you see, they sometimes fight against each other. This, this is, yeah, of course you shouldn't poke the memory directly there, but that is, by the way, exactly what the X server does, right? So um, let me just, what am I showing? This probably shows that. Maybe it does come up with an X server, but um, just that you know, you might have known this already, but uh, this direct memory mapping and register poking is exactly what classic device dependent X server drivers do. And um, All right, I plugged out the mouse for the video. Mouse also works here, obviously. So TVM here, of course, without much configured. Um, I only wonder though why the X server, why the, this should be hardware, because I'm not really sure why this is not our right. My, maybe I, okay, may I take this back. Maybe I had myself disabled that anyway. Doesn't matter, nothing to see. But um, yeah, so this is exactly how I programmed it there, how classic X server driver did it and um, this is this is also why the developers the X developers want to get rid of this in favor of um, kernel mode setting and um, DRI DRM direct rendering infrastructure um, so that there is no classic direct X driver and only one kernel driver and everything goes through it because as you see the X server driver is not going through the regular kernel so the yeah but again with my microkernel vision here multi-server microkernel despite performance and whatnot I find not only this development style here edit compile restart your not yet a full microkernel but similar to X drivers in my opinion the X server stuff was not too bad could have been a little bit nicer written not this vintage see here but maybe they are certainly fans of this coding style here but again i guess that's that for today i hope you enjoy this nice level of progress and also for you to inspire to hack on the p3 octane or whatever um, psion 5mx or whatever you might have at hand and people always ask me what should they start doing in my opinion do what you want to do um, if you have some amazing device like this and you finally want after a decade or a ThinkPad or an Amiga or Atari or anything else, PlayStation, Commodore 64, do what you have and what you like to do with. And I obviously, again, I've purchased this just for my collecting here. Just I have wanted always not only for T2 testing, but in general, this outstanding silicon transmitter and SJ Octane and p3 and stuff like this this is why i have it not for youtube not for something because certainly few people are interested in the silicon motion link 3d just that i for my entertainment and your education stuff want to do it and that's why i do it that's it for today have a good night or day and i hope to see you soon for all the next amazing tinkering to come